Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast with me, your host, Harry Simiu. Happy Sunday. Hope everybody has had a great week so far. The week's almost over. We'll be starting a fresh one tomorrow. I know you know that. I don't know why I said that. It's pretty obvious that after Sunday comes Monday and it's a fresh week, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Unless you're one of those people that sees Sunday as the start of the new week. I know a lot of calendars look at it like that or portray it like that. This is the most random intro opening to a pod I think I've ever done. But anyway, bear with me. Hope you're all good. <laughs> Hope you're well. And uh, thank you for tuning in as always. And when it comes to Arsenal, there's always quite a bit to discuss, isn't there? We're going to talk uh, about three stories today. We're going to bring you the latest on the Mikel Marino pursuit. Are Arsenal actually making progress on this? Because we've not heard anything clear uh, with regards to where exactly we're at on this. Uh, we're also going to talk about a couple of players that have become available after they were left out of their club's pre-season friendly squad yesterday, with the coach being very clear that those two, the two that I'm going to touch on have no futures there. And maybe that presents an opportunity to Arsenal. We'll talk about those guys. I'll reveal who they are in a little bit. We're also going to talk... Julian Alvarez, the Manchester City striker, who is being linked with a move away, and perhaps more uh, interestingly to us, is being linked with a move to Arsenal. Would he be a good fit? How much would you pay for him? Is there a world in which City would even consider doing business with us again, given that we've managed to close the gap on them significantly over the last few years? Is he the potent goal scorer that Arsenal need. We'll get into all of that as well on this edition of the Chronicles of Aguna podcast. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. If you're watching us on YouTube, leave us uh, a like, leave a comment. You know the drill. It all helps uh, with the old algorithm. If you're listening uh, via the audio platforms, please be subscribed as well uh, on whichever platform it is that you prefer and leave us a review because those really, really do help too. Okay, let's get into our first story. We're going to bring you the latest on Mikel Marino. Is this thing actually moving forward? So according to Fabrizio Romano, Arsenal remain confident of closing the Mikel Marino deal in the next few days as the Premier League club now have an agreement with Real Sociedad on the package for the player, which will be around 30 million euros. The clubs are still discussing the structure of the deal and the payment terms, so there are still some things to clarify before it can be announced. But the transfer is progressing very well, and the expectation is that the deal will get done because the player has already said yes to Arsenal. Marino is no longer negotiating with the Spanish clubs as he had opportunities with Atletico Madrid and Barcelona. He wants to go to the Premier League and he wants to play for Arsenal to work under Mikel Arteta, who has been really influential in the market for the Gunners. This deal is at the final stages and is advancing very well with Marino expected to be an Arsenal player very, very soon. So that answers that question. It feels like we're at the stage where we're literally dotting I's and crossing T's. We're not far away from hearing something official about this deal. Obviously, once all of that is agreed, the payment structure, the payment terms, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, Mikel Marino will need to fly in, join up with the squad, um, undergo his medical before he joins up with the squad, of course, do all his club media duties, and then we'll get an announcement. I'm quite hopeful and optimistic that we'll get an announcement at some point next week. Will it be ahead of the game against Bayer Leverkusen on Wednesday at the Emirates Stadium? I'm not sure. I think if on Sunday we've still not agreed the payment terms and structure, I think you're asking a bit much. 
uh, to expect him, expect him to be revealed ahead of that game. But it would be great, wouldn't it, if he was wheeled out onto the pitch ahead of that one. That would um, that would make for a nice atmosphere at Emirates Stadium for what's actually probably one of the more intriguing friendlies of the summer against the German Bundesliga champions, a side managed, of course, by Xabi Alonso, a good friend of Mikel Arteta's, two coaches who are really doing brilliant things at the moment. Obviously, Xabi Alonso's got the league title under his uh, belt, which makes a, a big difference if you're going to compare them. But they're pretty similar in their styles. They're similar in where they come from, etc., etc. So should be fascinating. And of course, that means the return of Granite Xhaka, who I think Mikel Marino is the replacement for, albeit 12 months down the line. Um, it feels like he would plug that hole. He would give us uh, that kind of skill set that we lost when Granite Xhaka moved on. We talked about Marino so many times. I'm not going to sit here and go over what he brings and maybe what he lacks. Again, you can check out our scouting report episode. The link is in the description below if you haven't seen that or listened to that already. Do check it out. But finally, it feels like this is moving forward. I said that we hadn't heard anything particularly clear uh, around where this is at. And that's because, um, you know, we haven't had the whole deal agreed post from either Fabrizio Romano or uh, David Ornstein. But when Fabrizio Romano is talking um, sort of verbally, as in not on Twitter, he is saying things to the effect of, well, the package is is pretty much there um, with regards to what Arsenal are going to have to pay. And that is all fine. It's just about the structure and the deal. But we haven't had the old here we go, as at least I haven't seen it anyway um, on this one yet. So hopefully we can um, see this done very, very soon. Uh, Mikel Marino, Close to becoming an Arsenal player. Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, get your comments in in the section below. OK, we're going to move on to our next story. And we're going to talk about a couple of players. One who's a former gunner, actually, that perhaps represent opportunities for Arsenal in this uh, summer transfer window. He's a player that we've been linked with in the past on multiple occasions, but Federico Chiesa is now very much available. The Juventus uh, winger has been left out of their uh, friendly squad, uh, the friendly that they took part in yesterday, uh, according to Fabrizio Romano. Juventus's decision on Federico Chiesa is clear. There's a plan in place to sell the winger this summer. Um, and his contract, of course, is due to expire in June 2025. So they're not willing to let him see out the final year of his contract. They want to uh, move him on. Thiago Motta, the new manager, of course, who did brilliant things at Bologna last season. And of course, um, I think deserves a lot of credit for the progression of Ricardo Calafiori, one of our very own over the last year. Um has uh, made it clear that he doesn't see Chiesa as a part of the project and that the club are looking for solutions. Now, I wonder how much of that is Thiago Motta um, looking at Federico Chiesa and saying, you're not the guy for me. And how much of that is the club, the hierarchy, sort of pushing down on Motta and saying, well, if he's not going to sign a new contract, then he can't be a part of your plans. And is it a case of Thiago Motta just maybe backing that point up or, or, or sort of enforcing that idea from upstairs? There's no doubt about it. Federico Chiesa is a really, really talented player, but he's had some really bad injuries in his career that I think have impacted him and I think have seen him drop levels. There's a lot of talk of a, a domestic move for Federico Chiesa. Roma are interested, apparently. AC Milan's name has been banded about a little bit as well. Will he end up at any of those clubs? I don't know. Um, I don't know that any of those clubs would be in a position to outbid, for example, a Premier League club. But when you talk about his injuries, when you talk about the physical decline of Federico Chiesa, which I think is fair um, to highlight, you do wonder if he would be a success in the Premier League. Is this one where you look at it and you say, if the price is right and the terms are right, maybe this is a worthwhile punt and a worthwhile gamble? It might well be, you know. I'm not saying I'm totally convinced on this, and I'm not saying that if I were the one signing the checks, I'd be sort of rushing to write one out for Federico Chiesa. But I just think it's really interesting because this is a player that three years ago was regarded among the best talents in European football. And yes, things can change very quickly in our game. And, uh, you know, his decline has been clear for everybody to see. But if he can 
get fit, stay fit. If he can rediscover the form that he showed at the European Championships, in particular with Italy a few years back, there's no reason why he couldn't be a great asset to someone. Maybe not as a starter. Like I wouldn't look at Federico Chiesa nowadays and say, well, if he comes to Arsenal, he absolutely has to play. But as a squad player, as a backup player, as someone you can bring on to try and impact the game, he might tick a few boxes, you know, but it, again, it comes down to the price. It comes down to what you'd need to pay to get him out. I'm not saying I'd do this, but I'd certainly inquire about what it's going to take to get Federico Chiesa out of Juventus. And the longer this goes on, the longer this kind of standoff continues between Federico Chiesa and Juventus, whereby it's clear that nobody has got anywhere near Juve's valuation just yet. Um, and obviously with Juve doing what they're doing, which is kind of marginalising him. And we've talked about this from an Arsenal perspective in the past. When you make it really clear and obvious that you don't see a player as a part of your future, yet he remains in your squad at your football club, the value tanks. And I just wonder if the decision taken to leave Federico Chiesa out of the squad and make it abundantly clear to everybody, and I know it's been talked about for a while, but to really make that statement by leaving him out entirely. I just wonder if that has done Juventus damage now in terms of what they can demand for him. And so does that then make this a more attractive proposition for someone like us who's maybe looking for a backup right winger who could come in and support Bukayo Saka? I wonder. You know, if you were talking about, I don't know, 30 million before, how much of an impact does this have on his price? I think a big one. I think it basically says to the world that we're desperate to get him out and we will now entertain significantly lower offers. So if you could go in and get Federico Chiesa for 18 to 20 million quid, would that not be worth a gamble? I think it would. When you think about the fact that we paid that for Sambi Laconga, when you think about the fact that, um, you know, we paid way more than that for players that just haven't lived up to the billing. When you think that we paid 35 million for Fabio Vieira, who had nowhere near the track record that Federico Chiesa does um, at this stage in his career, would it not be worth going in and making a cheeky offer, 18 to 20 million quid? And if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, we walk away without any real concerns or stresses about it. I don't know. But staying on the subject of Juventus uh, very, very briefly, Another player who was named in this group, in this list of players that don't have a future at Juve was Wojciech Szczesny, um, formerly a gunner, someone that I think we all adored when he was at Arsenal, who went on um, to have a really wonderful career in Italy, spent some time at Roma, initially had a good uh, period there before earning a move to Juve and becoming Juve's number one for a long, long time and doing it very, very well. If there is a possibility that Aaron Ramsdale leaves between now and the end of the window, is there some legs in the idea of going out and signing Wojciech Szczesny on a short-term deal to be the number two behind David Raya? Now, my only kind of reservation would be that Wojciech Szczesny isn't quite as comfortable with the ball at his feet, and that's a big part of the way that we play. But as a short-term solution, uh, he knows the club, he understands the club culturally, um, he would know Mikel Arteta as well. Um, he's a very experienced goalkeeper now at this stage in his career. Um, international goalkeeper has been at the top of the game for a long, long time. If there was an opportunity to go and bring him in in a short-term deal to plug a hole that could potentially be left by an Aaron Ramsdale departure, then maybe that's something that I would explore too. It's interesting because Aaron Ramsdale's just returned um, from his holidays we don't really know what the future holds for him. What we do know is that nobody has come anywhere near Arsenal's valuation for him. And therefore, there may be a temptation on Arsenal's part to say, look, we're not going to get what we want for this goalkeeper. Do we loan him out somewhere where he's going to play regularly and hope that that kind of boosts his value back up to a point where clubs would be considering making a move for him? I don't know. Um, but if he is allowed to go out on loan, that leaves us incredibly short and we'd need to go and get a goalkeeper in anyway. Wojciech Szczesny could be the guy that bridges the gap um, for the time being, whilst allowing us to uh, sort of boost uh, Aaron Ramsdale's revenue once again 
And maybe that allows us to make a good, uh, much more uh, lucrative sale next summer um, whilst having Wojciech Szczesny in place to protect us against any potential injuries or availability issues concerning David Raya. So that's just one I would think about as well. I realise I'm going to get a lot of stick in the comments for suggesting that. But it's it's crossed my mind a few times this summer. And reading sort of the fact that Chiesa and, and Chesney have both been almost banished from Juventus and it's been made clear that they have no future at the football club. It's just got me thinking, not that these are players that you should be basing your transfer strategy around, but actually these are opportunities, market opportunities that perhaps we could benefit from if the circumstances are right. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And on to our final topic of the day, which is Manchester City's Julian Alvarez. According to the Mirror, Arsenal are monitoring Julian Alvarez. Suggestions are that Manchester City will demand a deal, including add-ons of around £80 million for the player. What do we make of this? I have long been an admirer of Julian Alvarez. I think he's a fantastic player. I've been talking quite a bit recently about the fact that when I listen to the names we're being linked with in that striker department, none of them are particularly inspiring to me. None of them scream they're worth 60, 70, 80 million to me. Like we talked about Osimhen the other day. Um, I think it was yesterday. Good player, great striker in his own right. Not sure he's the right fit for Arsenal. And I think there has been a decline from Victor Osimhen in the last couple of years. And so I would no longer be willing to pay what Napoli are said to be demanding. If they drop the price significantly, then we can talk. But he's not a player that I would go out and sign at any cost, like maybe Alexander Isak would be, for example. I could say similar things of Victor Gyokaris. Like him, looks good, ticks a lot of boxes um, and appears to have a lot of the skills that maybe we're missing in that centre forward area. But 100 million euros, which is his release clause, feels crazy excessive and I wouldn't go anywhere near that. Julian Alvarez is a player that I would be willing to break the bank for because I think he's that good. And I think at any other club or most other clubs, Julian Alvarez starts. He's got Erling Haaland in front of him, which is incredibly unfortunate for him. But I think at most other clubs, he is the main man. I think he's impressed when he's played for Manchester City. I think he's impressed for Argentina when he's played. I think he's got lots and lots going for him. I think he's got uh, a great ability to get in behind defences. I think he's a really intelligent player. I think he is a really, really accomplished finisher and goal scorer which I don't think we have in this uh, kind of Arsenal squad when it comes to central striking options. 80 million feels a bit excessive. And I, again, you know, there'd be a reluctance to, if I were the guy signing the checks, to go that far. But if you could get this done for sort of 60, 65, maybe even 70, I would seriously consider this. Seriously, seriously consider this. I think he's that good. I think he's a, a, an unbelievable player. He just needs to play week in, week out. We know um, that this is unlikely, having said all of that, because Manchester City uh, not only are, in my opinion, according to this report, demanding uh, a ridiculous amount of money, they also probably don't want to sell to us. Um, they've done it in the past. They sold us Jesus and Zinchenko, and that enabled us to really accelerate our process, if you like, and get to a point where we challenged them. Um, having built on that the following season, we got even closer. And I think, although Pep Guardiola would be really blasé about it in public and say, well, they weren't good enough for me, so I didn't mind selling them to Arsenal. I think within the walls of the Etihad, there would have been whispers and murmurs. There would have been talk around the fact that actually what they did was weaponize Arsenal to a point where Arsenal were then able to go on the attack and get a lot closer. And I think there'll be a real reluctance among the Manchester City hierarchy to potentially gift Arsenal. And it wouldn't be, oh, I say gift, we'd pay for him, obviously, but to give Arsenal something, a, a weapon, a tool that would allow them to potentially usurp Manchester City at the top of the Premier League. So I, I don't think they would do this unless the deal was way too good to turn down. Interestingly, there are other clubs involved in Julian Alvarez, as you'd expect, because he's made it quite clear, I think, um, 
albeit indirectly at times, that, that a move away is something that he's considering. Atletico Madrid are said to be in talks with Manchester City. I can't see them paying £80 million for the player. So, um, you know, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But I, I say that there are players out there that inspire me, players that I look at, and I think I would definitely go out and sign you. And there are players that I'm kind of on the fence about. And so it's very much price dependent. There's always going to be that price dependency point. But in Julian Alvarez, I see a top, top striker and I'd love to have him at the Arsenal. Do I think it's going to happen? No, um, we could be interested, but I don't think Manchester City would make it easy for us. I think I read somewhere as well that one of the reasons that Julian Alvarez is unhappy at Manchester City, outside of the fact that he's not playing every week, which I'm sure he'd love and I'm sure um, he deserves, given how good he is and the age he's at and the kind of work he's put in to get to this point. There was talk about him not being happy in England, the weather, all of that. I know the weather's a bit better down here in London, but if he is wanting to return to a Spanish-speaking country, if he is wanting uh, to return or to depart, I should say, from these shores, then you know it's going to take an almighty offer from Arsenal to convince him to do to not do that. And then you start getting into the territory and realm of, well, is this worth it or not? But if I put the price to one side, if I put the fact that he's a City player to one side and I just think about what Julian Alvarez is and whether I'd like him at Arsenal or not, the answer is yes, yes, yes. Yes, every single day of the weekend on a Sunday because he is a superb forward. I really, really do believe that. He scores goals despite not playing that much football. Um, he leads lines brilliantly. He's great at stretching teams. There's so much fluidity in his movement and there's an intelligence about the way he plays his football that I think would allow us to continue playing in the style that we do. I've talked a lot about having those kind of more traditional centre forwards. And in this Arsenal team, I think that, yes, there'll be some benefit. But at the same time, I think it could take away from some of our build up. It could take away from, um, you know, the way that we attack teams due to some of them having quite a static nature. I don't think that's the, the case with Julian Alvarez. I think he's got it all and I'd love to see him at Arsenal. But is it going to happen? I would say at this stage, no. Um, but one can dream, right? That's what the summer transfer windows are all about, I suppose. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on all the things discussed. Mikel Marino getting closer, according to Fabrizio Romano. Chiesa and Chesney are available. Would you take a gamble on any of them? Could Chesney be the guy that allows us to send Ramsdale out on loan and start to rebuild his value ahead of a potential sale next summer? Um, how much would you pay for Federico Chiesa? Is he worth a gamble? 18, 20 million. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I'd have a look. If you could get that money in, for example, for like Reese Nelson, and then it was essentially a, a swap in terms of at least the finances marrying up, then I think I would um, I, I would take a punt on him. I really, really would. And Manchester City's Julian Alvarez is being linked with a move to Arsenal, although there's no suggestions that this is at any advanced stage or anything. But would he be a good fit? I think he would. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And we'll be back on Monday with another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna Pod, unless, as I always say, something major breaks. Until then, take care of yourselves, guys. Have a great Sunday. All the best. Up the Arsenal. Goodbye. 